Company Mode. Good morning, everyone. This is Mark Raymakers with Insurance Agency Marketing Services. Today we've got a special guest here, Tori Hammond with North American, is going to help us out here today showing how universe, Index Universal Life, I should say, can be used in the retirement planning. And so uh, this morning is a recorded webinar. The good thing with that is I'll email this over to you when we're all done. It'll come to you in the form of a YouTube video, and you can watch this at your own leisure. We do have the question box open, so if you have questions as we go, I'd uh, encourage you to go ahead and type those questions in there, and we'll address them as they pop up. And so real quick here, I'm going to go through a few things on who we are and uh, how we can help you. Insurance Agency Marketing Services has been in the business now for 29 years, and uh, we've been offering annuity products and live products at independent producers now for that length of time. And Certainly excited about the relationship that we have with North American. It is a very fast, continuous, growing relationship. We're doing a tremendous amount of business there, and it's all because of uh, top advisors such as yourself. So you'll see why we like to work with them. And uh, he here in just a minute, I'll turn this over to Troy, and he'll do his portion. But I want to tell you, first off, one of the nice things about getting contract with us right out of the shoot here with North American is, and this is with the, any carrier, but today we're focusing on our good friends with North American. $100,000 level, $300,000, $500,000 is all going to be based on either uh, dollar for dollar in annuity, single premium life, or a percentage of that towards target premium. So if you decide that when you get set up with this here, you start producing, if you want to redeem your bonus at the first level, you can do that and get $750 cash with your commissions or a two-year subscription to the website newsletter service. Of course, if you don't have one of those and you want to just buy into a program, we've got some great help here. Matt, Neil, and Adam can get you set up there. So I'd encourage you to call and ask for Matt. He'll show you what and how we can help in that respect. Or if you choose not to do the first two, you can take the iPad. That's always nice today. The companies are all more and more moving towards that. And you know that when you get on the iPad and complete the application, you're going to have the most update, updated forms and you certainly can't mess up an application when you do that. If you choose not to do that, you want to wait till you get to the 300000 level, you can do the full Social Security program, 3,000-piece postcard mailing. That's a great way to get in front of more buyers. You're obviously talking with a senior crowd, and these uh, folks are going to be great prospects for you. Now, not everyone is obviously going to buy right out of the chute, but it's a great way to get in front of more seniors, obviously a chance to review their assets with them. You don't really make any money on the Social Security side of it, but it's getting to sit down with them and show them how you can help them uh, reposition assets to really take full advantage of the market and, um, you know, whatever it would be. So if you want to buy that program that's also available, you can call Steve Murray in our office. He will talk with you about that. But I'll tell you, agents that are using this program are really having some great success. So keep that in mind. Or there's the 2000 matching marketing money to promote your business. Or finally, there's a gift card. So you can choose any one of those three. You might decide to wait to get to the top level at the 500000 you can do the 5,000-piece mailing and seminar coaching with Matt Gill or 4,000-piece mailing and seminar coach with Dave Pimper. These two gentlemen are top producers of ours. They're great in the seminar arena. So if you're looking at maybe doing some seminar selling, either one of those gentlemen can help you. You can earn it or you can buy it. You can certainly call our office. We'll get you their number, and you can visit with them individually and determine which route is best for you. Finally, we have the Risk Carlton Trevor Rewards Program. You can make your own personal getaway if you choose not to do any of the above. Okay, real quick here, we have our Life Annuity Training Academy. And you'll notice that we are real big on training. That's why if you look at our um, if you look at our webinar schedule, we've got something going every day of the week. And so the Training Academy is another real big thing. And we have one coming up here next week. It's already full, but just want to let you know that we do have these available to you. We'll have probably three or four next year. And I'm going to ask you real quick if you're interested at all in knowing more about our all-expense-paid training academies, if you would simply type Academy in the question box, what we'll do is we'll email you out an application and an agenda, what we normally cover. Of course, next year would be a whole new thing for us. But what we do is we cover your airfare, your meals, and your lodging. We fly you out on a Wednesday. Uh, we do a training uh, and dinner on that Wednesday evening. Then we do full day training on Thursday, half a day training on Friday. We send you back home. But here's a nice thing. We pay for your airfare. We pay for the meals. We pay for the lodging. There's really no expense to you. It is a great way to grow your business. And um, if you're not getting that kind of a opportunity where you're at now, you certainly need to give us a, give us a good hard look because this is an opportunity for us to help you to grow your business on the life and annuity side. So great uh, great training there. 
So if you change your mind and you want to know more, just go ahead and type Academy anytime. We'll get you out an application and an agenda. Okay, real quick here. Insurance email newsletter. If you're not doing anything like this for your clients or prospects now, this is a great way for you to grow your business and take advantage of the electronic media out there. Uh, now, Matt and Neil in our office can certainly help you with that, but um, this is just a, a simple little notice to you here that we've got a great way to support you on this side of your business, and Matt has done tremendous work uh, for agents, as, you know, and, and even for us, just to get out and get in front of you. So uh, be sure to call and ask for Matt if you'd like to know more about this, um, this program that we've got available to you. Okay, uh, something else here I want to point out to you. We have a referred producer program. A lot of times agents will just call us up and say, hey, I've got a friend I'd like, to, like you to visit with. And what we do is we get them contracted, we get them up and running. And so for every agent that you refer over to us, uh, we'll send you a check for $50 once they contract. And then we'll send you a check every quarter based on their production. Now, you're not uh, in the commission business. You're not, um, you don't have to worry about writing checks or anything. You don't have a downline agent. It's simply re a referral. Your referring, uh, referring agent does not take a cut in their commission at all. It's just our way of saying thank you for the referral. And so keep that in mind. If anybody comes to mind, you think we should call and get appointed, we'll, we'll uh, go ahead and we'll do our best to get that person up and running. And then you will receive the financial rewards of that. We also have a marketing re reimbursement program real quick. Basically, the way that works is every single time you write a piece of business with us, what will happen is we'll put money into a reimbursement account. So let's say now we're going to be coming into Thanksgiving and Christmas and a lot of uh, agents out there like to put together some sort of a, a, a party for their clients. And let's say you spend $1,000. If you turn around and send us the receipt for $1,000, we will turn around and send you a check for $500 if you have that in your reimbursement account. So it's 50% of your receipt. Okay, so that could be you need to purchase new envelopes, you need new pens, you need a laptop, you need whatever it is to support you in your business. We're going to reimburse you 50% of what your receipt is, assuming you have that in your account. So uh, that is just a great way for you to have another partner in your business. And um, that's one thing that we're going to do is we'll support you on that side in addition to your commissions. Okay, real quick, we have our top producers escape, and I'm going to turn this over to Troy. And basically, the way that works is is every dollar that you write, whether it's annuities, single premium, traditional life, etc., you can see on the screen here, those will go towards points for our trip for producer and guest. And next year, we're going to the uh, Victoria, British Columbia, August 3rd through the 7th. Now, the qualification period started January 1st of this year, and it goes until June 30th of 2016. So you can see there's still plenty of time to qualify, and uh, anything that you write will accumulate points towards that trip. So would love to have you there. It's a great opportunity for us to get to know you better. And um, with that said, I'm going to go ahead now, and it uh, looks like I am on the end of the last slide here for myself. So, Troy, if you've got your computer up here and you're ready to roll, I'm going to go ahead and yep. give you full control here. Thanks again, Troy, for taking time out of your busy day to help us out. We certainly do appreciate that. You bet. Thank you, Mark. And uh, you can hear my audio, hopefully, and see full screen. Yep, that's perfect. All right. Yeah, well, thanks, Mark. And uh, again, my name is Troy Hammond. I'm the Sales Development Specialist for Mark and his group at IMS here at North American Life Insurance at the home office. And we have a, actually an enormous amount of people on this webinar this morning. And I just wanted to uh, remind the people that joined as Mark was talking um, after the intro that he is fully recording this. And we'll get you a copy of that once it's all said and done. And then also, if you have any questions during the presentation, um, raise your hand and uh, Mark can stop me um, during my babbling, if you will, and uh, we'll address those questions as they come in. So um, without further ado, and what our topic this morning is, is retirement planning. Um, using index universal life insurance is actually one of our main topics of conversation right now at the sales desk here at the home office, and especially now with part one of AG49, the new actuarial guidelines that came out here. Um, there's a lot of questions regarding interest rates and doing these retirement supplement um, illustrations. So uh, we'll touch on that as well. So without further ado, we'll get started with this. Here's the disclosures. We've got two full pages of disclosures. I won't read them to you uh, due to time and uh, status wise, but if you want a copy of those, those are included in the presentation. So, you know, what is retirement planning? Well, 
depending on the company, they define it different ways. And you know, when you're using life insurance, North American, simply put, you know, we we basically define a retirement planning. It's using life insurance protection during those working years, and then the potential cash accumulation to supplement that income in the retirement years. And we'll look at some illustrations here in the following slides just to show you guys all that and put that all together. But using life insurance, that can really help enhance, you know, your client's traditional retirement plan, whether it's on top of a pension, a 401k, whatever it may be. Our suggested remedy is to incorporate an IUL to help supplement the retirement income. So today I'd like to talk with you about, you know, the hows and the whys to use North American to make your next retirement planning sale. So we'll kick off things. I've got the agenda up on the screen here. Today's presentation for the retirement planning. We'll start off, we'll take a closer look at why life insurance for the retirement planning, just to help fully understand, you know, how it works, client objectives you know, their objectives and how this concept really comes together and helps benefit the clients. And then next we'll take a look at that second point, you know, why us, why North American Life? You know, we'll share what's available in our product portfolio and then really why you should consider us for the next sale. And then we'll bring the concept, what I call bring it home, make it real, if you will, um, with a look at a few sample case studies and discuss some key items to consider when presenting this to the client. And then also positioning and, you know, again, the presentation. So why life insurance? Well, to fully understand this concept, if you will, and how it works, we need to start with the cornerstone of the sale. That's the value of the life insurance. Life insurance, the first step of any plan like that is we have to properly insure the client's um, DBs are met, the death benefit. So, you know, an index do well policy, that's going to provide obviously the client with that death benefit protection, you know, during the working years. And then on the back end, we've got that potential for the cash accumulation. That's going to help supplement that income in the retirement years. So first and foremost, during those working years, again, we need to we need that death benefit protection. That's going to help, as we all know, help replace the lost income should the insurer die. Plus, that death benefit's generally tax-free to the heirs. And then during the retirement years, the death benefit provides, you know, we've got that security. Um, security to the beneficiaries, all while providing that client with those additional funds um, to help supplement retirement income. Tax-free loans, that's the main talking point on this when we look at the back end. And we'll look at that again in the coming slides on some illustrations. Keep in mind, too, that death benefit, that can be left behind um, to the client's heirs, creates a legacy. In fact, we have one of our sales concepts on top of this one is legacy planning. So life insurance does come with two unknowns, right? the loss of income from a premature death, and then outliving your assets during retirement. Well, we just covered using the life insurance for the retirement planning, um, you know, providing that death benefit protection during the working years, and then on the back end, we've got the potential cash accumulation for the retirement years. But we do want to look at some of the key benefits that, you know, your clients and you as agents are going to see from the index IUL policy. Again, we've got the immediate death protection. That's the cornerstone of this whole sales concept, guys, is the death benefit protection immediately. Um, if their heirs would have that uh, option, we have that provided for them. Keep in mind, too, on these, there's no funding limitations. That's the key. A lot of people don't keep, you know, they don't remember. But since life insurance is not a qualified plan, again, it's not a qualified plan, it's not subject to tax qualified plan contribution limits. So a lot of our sales we see come in are clients that have maxed their 401k, they've maxed their IRAs, they've maxed their pension plans, they've maxed all of these qualified plans. If you're fortunate enough to know those clients, you've got to say on life insurance. Again, with any plan like that, you've got the tax deferred growth. You know, with life insurance, cash values, they grow on a tax deferred basis. We've got the potentially tax-free income on the back end with those loans or withdrawals. You know, any accumulated cash values within the policy, that can generally be taken as income tax-free loans or withdrawals. Key there is providing the policy is not a MEC, modified endowment contract. Um, no penalties, we've got that there. Um, clients, they can access that cash value without a tax penalty for early withdrawals, unlike certain qualified plans, as we know. And there's no RMDs, required, you know, the required minimum distributions. You know, clients aren't required on these to take the distributions. Um, so they can leave those, any, un, any accumulated cash values alone, even if loans or withdrawals are originally illustrated, um, they're not required to take distributions. So keep in mind, what you illustrate is not something they have to do down the road. So there are a few, you know, a few key items we have to consider when using this. Um, you'll hear it from me a couple times if you heard my presentations before. Um, I'm big into the death benefit. Um, we get these all the time, you know, the minimum death benefit max loans. And those are fine. We get them all day long. 
but we need to make sure the client has that appropriate amount of life insurance by conducting a complete needs analysis. And we, we help you with that at North American. We have product material. Mark, I'm sure, has stuff there at IMS. We also have it built into our software. So just to reiterate, that death benefit protection offered through life insurance, um, it's valuable throughout an individual's life. We have to keep that in mind. And then during the working years, we all know that death benefit, that can replace that lost income you know, if the insured died. So we have to make sure that's known. And then after retirement, it continues to provide a death benefit for the insured heir. So there's a lot of talking points on that. Um, and it, keep in mind that death benefits generally is not going to be eroded by taxes when the assets do transfer. Um, Non-guaranteed performance, we have to keep that in mind. Cash values for loans, withdrawals in later years, they, meet, they may be more or less than illustrated. I am going to talk to you a little bit about numbers and how you can feel very comfortable um, and confident running numbers in North America and our limitations, if you will, on our software. And that's why we're in this, um, you know, AG49, if you will. And we'll talk about that as well. Um, permanent life insurance also requires the monthly deductions to pay the charges, expenses. Um, some of those may increase as the insured gets older. Those deductions may reduce the cash value of the policy. Probably not telling you anything you don't know yet, especially on the insurance charges. So on the next one, again, we have to consider you know, the death benefit. Again, I'm going to talk about the amount. Well, how do we determine the amount? Well, there's a lot of needs analysis and tools out there. I mentioned a couple to you. Um, that's obviously an important consideration. So when we're looking at the permanent plans, um, and we have this sale where we want to supplement the income, it may be tempting, again, to run that illustration that shows the max income with a minimum death, death benefit. Well, in doing that, the illustration, that obviously is going to provide better income performance, right? Because we're keeping the COIs low, lower death benefit, more income, more cash. But we do have to keep in mind that the death benefit amount, it may not be sufficient to meet the client's needs. So once you take that in consideration, hey, you've got a product now, you can minimum DB, max loan, as long as they got that needed death benefit protection. Um, we also want to consider, too, the client's future needs. Um, you know, if he or she chooses to contribute higher premiums to the policy in future years, it may be required to increase that death benefit amount. So if we do, that insured might need to submit evidence of insurability down the road. So you want to keep maybe a little bit room, if, that, if I'm making sense, hopefully keep a little bit of room from your initial point of sale to, so we're not guideline leveling that right away because if we're minimum death benefit, we're max funding it, and we they want to pump in some more money down the road, that's going to jack up that death benefit, guys, and that might get to another banding on underwriting. So something to keep in mind, maybe leave a little bit of room if they think they're going to add money down the road and um, increase that death benefit. Keep in mind, too, target premiums, which what you guys get paid on, they're the lowest under a minimum death benefit scenario. So the higher death benefit, higher you get paid commission and more death benefit provided to the client. Um, expected changes in premium, I talked about that a little bit. You know, while money might be tight now, um, client may want to increase premiums down the road, so just leave some extra room on that death benefit. Um, again, there's some considerations as well. Um, you know, do I choose increasing death benefit? Do I choose level? Um, increasing death benefit, which we used to call option B years ago, that may allow the higher premiums to avoid becoming a mech. Um, if choosing that option, and it is consistent with the client's needs, Consider, we put consider there, I want to say change it. Change it back to level in the year following the last premium payment. That's going to help keep those, it's really going to limit mortality charges, if you will. So, for example, you've got a 45-year-old, he wants to put in money for 20 years, and then at, I'm just going to keep this simple, guys, 20 years, and at age 66, he wants to start taking the income. So, we fund it from age 45 to 65, and we're increasing the death benefit for 20 years, from 45 to 65. Then at age 66, the year after he's done paying premium is when you would change it to level. So if you, if you don't have that number right and you change it to level in that 20th year, it's not going to allow you to show it. You're, I mean, you're going to be frustrated with the software. So make sure you change it the year after they're done paying premium if you do that increasing. Um, for you guys, for me as agents, what, keep in mind when you're doing that increasing, you are going to lower that death benefit, lowers your guys' target premiums. But if you're in a competitive situation looking at loans against another company, whatever the case may be, loans will look best in a lot of scenarios using that option B, that increasing death benefit. Um, and avoid the modified endowment contract. We'll talk about that. Um, we, we really want you to avoid that, guys, when illustrating these. Um, if we, you know, life insurance policies that surpass certain premium limits, those can be classified as a, 
as a MEC, so it's generally best to avoid funding a policy at a level where it becomes a MEC, since loans from a MEC are taxable upon receipt. So the key here is non-MEC the policy. Uh, we look at lump sum transfers, SPIA considerations. You know, you might have some scenarios, and a lot of you might have had this in the past, where clients have a large lump sum they want to fund a life insurance policy with. That's great. Well, if the lump sum's paid as a single premium, you know, that policy might result in a MEC, and you might look see as a MEC status. So it's generally advisable to pay those premiums to a policy as quickly as possible, but we also want to avoid that MEC. So in many cases, a client may want to consider, you know, spreading that premium out over a period of years. And an option for the client is to utilize uh, what's called a SPIA, a single premium mean annuity. Um, North American Software System, we have a button that automatically generates an illustration utilizing our SPIA. So just a sales idea, you know, by utilizing a SPIA, the client's able to systematically spread out a large lump sum and will internally fund. So for example, if you do write the SPIA with North American, first foremost, you get commission on both of them. And then that internal, uh, that life insurance policy will be funded internally from the SPIA. So you guys can basically wipe your hands, clean them, and you're done. We'll internally fund everything from that SPIA. Um, in, you, get, you guys can write the SPIA anywhere else. It, it's just a little bit, probably more paperwork for you guys. And we have to tell company XYZ every month, every year, we're taking that money and we're going to fund it unless the client wants to take possession of the money. It's easier if we just do an internal. So we've looked at some of the reasons and basics for life insurance. What I wanted to do too today is kind of take a dive into why North American and find out to see, you know, what our products and what we can do to help you guys on the next sale, which we're talking about the retirement one today. So we're going to talk about our flagship product. Um, that's the Builder IUL. That's our fl flagship product on the IUL side. I almost said number one selling product, but our custom guarantee is our number one selling product. Um, I think, though, with uh, future here in the next year or so, we could be looking at the Builder guy. It's just that powerful a product. Keep in mind, this Builder is meant to max fund it, though. It's a product where it looks the best when you're max funding up to, like, guideline level, so really pumping the cash in the product. Some of the key talking points, this is a big one, daily index sweeps. What does that mean? Well, some companies will do annually, quarterly, monthly, or twice a month index sweeps. What that means is when North American, when we get the client's premium, that when we, you know, premiums are received, those can be allocated into their index selection that trading day. They're not set aside for, like I said, the long periods of time, monthly, weekly, whatever it is, into a low fixed account until the next sweep occurs. So basically what this means for you guys is your client's premium dollars are going to work for them day one rather than waiting weeks or months as with some other companies. Um, we also interest, we credit interest based on beginning segment values. What the heck are you talking about, Troy? Well, one of the great design values of our North American products, I don't think it gets talked as much as it should, but it's our interest. Um, the credit is based upon the segment value after charges. For example, you know, let's say we had a policy with a value of 10000 There were $1,000 worth of charges throughout the year. We're going to credit interest on the 10000 beginning segment rather than take the 1000 off and make it 9000 then credit. So that design element can make a big difference, especially in competitive situations, especially long-term when you're looking at the builder and you're funding this long-term. Every year you have that, that neat, if I call it unique crediting, that's going to add up. Um, we also don't require funds in the fixed account. Um, some companies require maybe 25, 30% in the fixed account to cover mortality charges, COIs. Um, the client with us can put everything in the index. So we talked about a lot of stuff already, and, and I'm, I want to talk about some more stuff that kind of hits home with me. This is coming into with AG49, and I'm not going to get into the new actuarial guidelines. A lot of you probably are already familiar with it and what's coming up in March again in 2016. But I did talk about earlier how you can feel confident running illustrations with us. Well, number one reason, I think, is the cap variable loan. So today's interest rates, we're loaning money at about four and a half or four and a quarter, four, four and a quarter, depending on the week. Right now it's four and a quarter starting this morning. Do we let you illustrate that on our software? Most of you probably say, no, you don't. Um, our cap variable loan rate is 6%, but we'll only allow you to illustrate right now, I think it's like with the new one, 5.42 to 6%. Well, what we don't want you guys to do is illustrate today's low interest rate environment for 25, 30 years like some companies were doing. Basically to us, to me, it's throwing pies in the sky. So when you're illustrating almost to our cap variable loan, so if you want to feel comfortable and illustrate, hey, 
Mr. and Mrs. Client, I'm illustrating a variable loan rate of 6%. That is the most North American will ever go to. Some companies don't even have caps. If they do, you're looking at double digits, 10, 11, 12%. So very, very key talking point, guys, is the cap variable loan rate. Um, remember, too, the client can switch loan types without a cash payoff. Um, I like the variable one, and that's available in year six. It's available at no additional cost to your client. It is a very attractive um, benefit. Question may come up. Well, what do we do if we need to take money in the first five years since the variable loan rate's not available to year six? You can take a standard loan or, you know, a standard withdrawal from the policy. Um, but cap variable loan comes into play in year six, um, as well as the net zero costs we call a wash loan. So cap is usually a bad thing in this industry, but not in this scenario. Um, over loan protection benefit. Um, not going to spend a huge amount of time on that. It's based an additional feature. It can be really attractive in these sales because it's automatically included with the policy and it's available after the policy has been in force um, 15 years and the insured's age 65 or older. Made sure I was getting that right. And that's designed, what it basically does guys is it keeps the policy from lapsing due to excessive loans and to continue providing death benefit coverage. The one I like better um, because it doesn't basically freeze the policy, it's got more flexibility is the protected death benefit. This is the one you really want to kind of want to remember. That's well suited for these sales because if your clients determine, hey, they no longer require the level of protection that we originally selected when the policy was issued, so they don't need that high death benefit anymore. They can choose a minimum death benefit amount. So clients can continue to access the accumulated policy values through those loans or withdrawals but the amount available will be adjusted accordingly. Um, again, this one's the same. It's available after the policy's been in force 15 years and the insured age is 65 or older. So that's the one we see used more than anything as a protected death benefit on the back end. So additional you know, benefits, if you will, of the builder. Um, attractive benefit for the client is the guaranteed interest rate bonus of 75 basis points. That's available in year 11. It just provides a client with additional long-term cash accumulation potential. We also have the 3% minimum return. Um, one of the main highlights of the index UL is the index floor rate. That's guaranteed never to be less than 0%. But in addition to that, um, you know, zero, North American will maintain a minimum account value for the index segments. Um, the minimum account value will be calculated using a 3% annual interest rate. So really eight, every eight years, North American, we do a true up. So we'll look at the policy every eight years, and if their index, their S&P 500, whatever they chose, is not more than the minimum guarantee rate of 3%, we're going to true it up and kick it up to the 3%. We haven't had to do that yet because the market's returned more than average on a seven-year run. But hey, if, they, if it doesn't, we've got the 3% minimum figured in. What happens if, that, if the client dies or if they surrender in year three or four? We'll still true it up at that year. But if they're live and it's still in force, it just happens every eight years. Um, accelerated death benefits. These are some big ones nowadays. Um, we have the terminal, the critical, and the chronic, and I want to discuss those kind of in detail in the following slides. When we're looking at, you know, one of our main sales concepts too is like the policy review, like your annual review. Um, we have a lot, we're getting a lot of business right now from some products, some whole life products, or some old UL products where the cost of insurance is just eating up the cash value, you know, I think we've all seen those. So what agents and you guys out in the field are looking at now is some of these new products with these accelerated living benefits. Mr. and Mrs. Client, we can 1035, 20, 30 grand, whatever it is, into a new product, we get a higher death benefit, lower cost of insurance than you're paying right now on that old product, plus you get the terminal, the chronic, and critical, um, obviously depending on the product and the state you guys live in, but most of the time all three are available. And we'll talk about those if you're not familiar with them. The first and the biggest thing is there's no additional upfront cost or underwriting. Um, the key there is no additional upfront cost, so they're not a rider, so you're not paying for something that you might never use. You got more money going into the policy, more cash going into the policy every month, every year to accumulate interest. We'll talk about terminal. Terminal is automatically included. Um, it's available to the clients of all ages. Basically what that is, if the client has a 24-month life expectancy, um, they can accelerate a certain amount of their death benefit. Um, they can basically accelerate almost up to 75% of their death benefit or 750000 the lesser of those two. Uh, marketability, it's a great benefit. It's automatically included, the client's policy. And then when mentioning this too, it's great to remind them of some of the following opportunities. They can have access to the funds during a time when they, you know, they're faced with an expensive medical bill, out-of-pocket costs, high deductibles, you name it, non-covered charges. Um, another idea too is, you know, for the client, consider avoiding, you know, being that, we call it insurance rich, cash poor. 
that's an unfortunate situation. That could be a result of, again, expensive terminal illness. So having access to that can really prevent um, that potential awkward dilemma. And then one final idea is leaving a legacy while they're still living. You know, take that uh, lump sum, family trip, whatever it may be. So unfortunate, very unfortunate incident for the client, um, but we have them covered on the back end. The second one I want to talk about is the critical. That's basically for your heart attacks, your cancer, strokes, major organ transplants, and then the kidney failure. Again, that's included up front, guys, no additional cost or underwriting. Um, that goes up to age 75 and up to table two. So from, a, from that standpoint, if the client's under 75, up to table two, they get that. Um, physician certification is required for each critical illness. Um, typically will not require additional claims um, or underwriting beyond our specified form. So pretty slick. They're getting the check. We usually within what I'm said, what I've been told is about three to five days. Guys, they're getting these accelerations. And another talking point too is these accelerations are off the death benefit. So typically, most of the time, these are going to be a tax-free transfer. So they're not taxed. Um, a great design of that one is we do know the approved claim. It's a known amount of 40%. So the client knows up front that they'll receive 40 cents on every dollar that they accelerate. We'll talk about kind of what I mean by that here when we get into the chronic. Um, nice Again, the nice feature of this one, too, is a quick, quick and simple claims process. Um, the main point of the critical is cash when you need it most. Um, that can, again, help cover a variety of costs, your high deductibles. Um, use it to pay life insurance premiums. You know, unlike our terminal chronic, the cost of insurance charges continue on this. So the client may choose to take an acceleration to pay for the life insurance and other out-of-pocket expenses. A um, lot of different things we can all probably think about maybe a family members went through for marketability. The next one and our last one is probably the most popular one. A lot of people will market it as a long-term care one. It's the chronic. Um, I don't like to use long-term care because I truly believe this isn't a supplement. Um, but it, again, available to age clients 75 up to table four. So we go two tables up from the critical. The insured on this one to qualify must be permanently unable to perform two out of six ADLs. Um, that's within the last 12 months. And on this one, the maximum benefit available is 24% of the death benefit up to 240 with one election and that's available every 12 months. Oh, one thing I'll mention on critical too, which is one thing I, I should have mentioned, is they have a heart attack today, acceleration. They have a stroke next week, that's a separate acceleration, guys. So those are two opportunities, I mean bad opportunities, but two opportunities for an acceleration. Um, so we get back to chronic. Total acceleration, that can be up to 95% of the death benefit for a mil total of a million dollars. So I just wanted to kind of throw those out, get into the weeds a little bit with numbers, but just so you're kind of aware of those. Um, I will add too, you know, a lot of these numbers on the back end with the discounting, which we'll talk about, those can all be seen on a changing needs report on our software. So if you're using North American software or even WinFlex the software, once you're in view mode on the illustration, you know, you click view and you can see the tabular detail and whatnot, you can add a report called the changing needs report. And that'll break down some hypothetical amounts because the death benefit is reduced by the amount of death benefit accelerated. So, you know, since benefits are paid prior to death, a discount will be applied to the death benefit accelerated. So really, truly as a result, the actual amount received will be a little bit less than the amount the death benefit accelerated. There's two ways of doing these guys. There's the pay for upfront. Uh, we chose the discounting on the back end. So companies are going to do it either way. They're going to make you pay for it upfront. I don't like the upfront one because you might be paying for something you never use. So I like the, the discounting on the back end. And that's basically dependent upon their age, sex, rate class, as well as the average life expectancy for the acceleration type. Also the Moody's corporate bond yield. That you can get in the weeds, but that's why we have that um, changing needs report on the software. So basically a high interest rate environment means a larger discount of the accelerated death benefit. We have to look at what we're losing, not investing it, while a smaller rate means a lower discount amount. So basically the older the client is, the more they're gonna get. Um, we look at marketability and I wanted to mention this is not a long-term care product. It's not intended to replace long-term care. So we need to remember that, that first and foremost, it's life insurance, but there are a ton of marketable you know, discussion points, if you will, about the trigger of this benefit. And I think a lot of you have probably seen that in the past. You think about family members, um, whatever the case may be, there's a lot of different things we can look at. Again, no additional premiums or underwriting required. So if they choose to, not to use it, it didn't cost them any additional premium. So there's also a couple things to consider. Again, um, we're nearing the end of the presentation. I thank you guys all for your patience. Uh, I think everybody so far, Mark, is on there, and I don't think we've had any questions come in. If we have, interrupt me, but we're, we're nearing the end here. 
We um, have one some thing questions, can... and we can wait till the end to do the questions, I suppose. Okay. Yeah. We'll just hold on. Perfect. Perfect. Um, I talked about it a little bit earlier. Do you use level? Do you use increasing? Remember, level that's going to provide that initial coverage with more death benefit in those early years, but less income performance in the later years. So that option will typically provide a higher target, higher target, you get paid more comp because of the larger initial death benefit. And again, the increase in death benefit option, remember lower DB to start, lower cost of insurance, more cash, lower target for you though. Um, another thing I wanted to touch on, do I use the two tests? There's two tests, the guideline premium test or the cash value accumulation test, GPT or CBAT. Well, the GPT, the guideline premium test, is the most common on this one. That's going to provide the best performance for long term, but it does provide the limited premium flexibility. So in illustrating that, remember I talked about, consider, you know, consider showing an increasing death benefit option, and then again switching to level the year after that last premium payment. That's going to help keep the COIs down. See that. You know, that... That basically will provide the best performance for short term, and with higher corridor factors, it'll raise the death benefit more in those later years, and that allows for more funding flexibility. So usually when utilizing like CVAT, use a level death benefit option as an increasing one, it's really counterproductive with CVAT. Um, and then we also got, we're talking about loans, standard loans, variable loans. I did talk about those a little bit. I won't go into those. Most of our business, especially if we're illustrating loans guys after that sixth year, we're illustrating that variable loan rate. I think mainly due to clients, agents, they like that variable loan rate cap. They can feel comfortable illustrating that variable loan. The reason I say comfortable, what do you mean by that, Troy? Well, if we're illustrating today's current rates of, let's just say 4%, we loan money at 4%, and then we're illustrating a, prior to AG39, we're illustrating a look back, a 25, 20, 15 year look back at, let's say 12%, okay? Once we start taking income, products return in 12%, companies only charging four, there's eight points in there, and we call that positive arbitrage. 8% in there every year they're showing, that's very unrealistic, and that's why we're in this AG49. It's a really good thing for North American because we've never illustrated products that way. We've always been compared, or we've always been um, conservative, if you will. And if you've written with us, you know we're a very conservative company. We take that approach. We're proud of it, um, and it's worked for us. It is what it is. It's worked for us, and that's where we're going to stay. And now with AG49, everybody's pretty much on a level playing field. So um, maintenance. I do want to talk about maintenance. What do I mean by that? Well, after the policy is issued, it is important to work with that client and really try to maintain that the policy and ensure that it will continue to function to meet the client's needs. Uh, the best way to do that is by conducting that annual policy review with the client, review the annual statements of accounts. Now the client can actually go on our website too and easily pull that annual statement a lot simpler than they could before, and you as the agent can as well. Um, I think as agents, we're all guilty probably, I know me for sure, if you guys do it, great. I know me for sure, I'm guilty of not doing those annual reviews as much as a person should. You're gonna learn a lot about sitting at the client's kitchen table and going over their policies, really the old ones too. Remember I mentioned replacing some of those old whole lives, those old ULs that are eating up cash? That's where that comes into play. And we have a sales concept for it. We have client approved videos, client approved uh, pieces. Um, all on our website, Mark's website, links to it, whatever. However you get access to it, we have the sales concepts for policy review to help you guys um, work through that. And then also with that too, you're going to be able to continue that and monitor, if you will, the client's needs. Uh, make adjustments to the policy as appropriate. And then finally pick, you know, the periodic beneficiary designation reviews. Help ensure that the client's wishes at their death are, you know, fulfilled and everything there is accurate. So, I'd like to move from, you know, why North American to discuss some tactics and tips for positioning. Um, we understand why the client should consider life insurance as a solution. We've got that figured out, but I want to take a look at some target markets. You know, we get to thinking in a recent LIMRA stat, if you, it, it's sad, 33% of Americans said they don't have enough life insurance, including a quarter of them who already own a policy. So I would say that again, 33% of Americans said they don't have enough life insurance, including a quarter who already own a policy in an additional study, four out of 10 adults have no life insurance coverage. So we just came out of September with was Life Insurance Awareness Month, and hopefully all of you use some of the, whatever company it is, use their product, use their marketing presentations, and really we want to get that um, verbiage out there to the clients. So based upon those stats I just read, it's really easy to see there's a lot of, there's numerous consumers, if you will, in this country that don't have adequate life insurance. So they need that protection now, 
during the working years, they're also going to need their the retirement years. And we won't even get in the retirement numbers, the percentage of people that are not that feel they're not prepared for retirement. We all probably know those. So some traits you want to consider um, for that target market, you know, clients that are planning for retirement. Those are typically age 25 to 60, generally middle to high income earners. Um, we look at those who encounter contribution limits. I talked about that earlier. Clients that lack access to a qualified plan. Um, clients that have expressed concerns about possible market losses with other plans. Look at your 401ks in the last eight, nine years. Um, individuals that may be looking for possible, you know, your tax advantage solutions and or are concerned about future tax rates. So, you know, ask yourself, you know, who do I know that could benefit from this? So real quick, I want to look at some case designs. Um, we've got Alan here, 45-year-old, uh, preferred non-tobacco. He needs life insurance, and he wants to fund it 20000 for 20 years. So that was my 45-year-old I talked earlier, funding it for 20 years. This one here is a hypothetical example, like all IULs. We're showing Alan he's purchased the builder, so same product we talked about. He's paying that 20000 in level premium until he reaches age 65. In this example, we're showing an illustrated interest rate of 7% on the policy's cash value in all years, along with a variable interest rate loan of 5.5%. So even though we're loaning money right now in the low four mark, we're still not gonna allow you to illustrate that. We're at five and a half percent on these loans. Um, so at age 66, he begins taking that variable loan from his policy, which based upon these assumptions would be about 72,468. So a little under 73 grand each year, that's gonna supplement that retirement income. Um, the client could expect to recoup the premium spade in the policy just after six years of loans. So that's a pretty strong talking point. Um, it's also important for the clients to understand that obviously these results, guys, are they're dependent on that crediting, um, that earned crediting rate. This one's based off 7%. You can dial that down and play with the numbers too. So our new look back right now with AG49 is 7.42 on this product. So we're not even illustrating what we can illustrate. Conservatively illustrating at 7%, you can choose to do what you want. What I would do too is if you are spreadsheeting companies, if you're saying, hey, I'm spreadsheeting four companies at 6%. Keep in mind, if you're comparing, it sounds fair, right? We're illustrating everybody at 6%. They're all gonna be the same, not necessarily. We have some of the highest caps in the industry. So North American, our annual cap right now is 13.5%. Okay, so you're illustrating us at 6%. We have a cap at 13.5%. That's not taking in consideration that higher cap. It's only allowing the product to return 6% per year. So if you've got another company, you're illustrating at 6% and their cap is 10%, that's really not fair to us, nor would it be fair to any other company that has a higher cap by illustrating everybody at the same interest rate. So one thing I would consider is if you are spreadsheeting that, if you know somebody that's spreadsheeting that, I'd like to educate on maybe increase that illustratable rate, the percentage that their cap is higher. You know, so if their cap's 13.5% compared to a 10% cap, um, let's say that's a 38% increase. Whatever the number is, maybe it'll run this number 38% higher. So that gives a more fair um, analogy or a fair comparison, if you will, and hopefully that makes sense. So just keep in mind, if you're illustrating everybody at the same rate, you really gotta keep in mind, well, you know, what, what are the internals of the product? What can I actually earn on the product? So I just wanted to put that in there and hopefully it didn't get in the weeds on there. Um, let's see, I wanted, okay, net zero cost loan. There's another option and we talked about that wash loan. You may call it wash loan, net zero cost loan. We've got the same guy, 45 year old Alan, put in the 20 grand for 20 years. This is a little bit lower, isn't it, than the last one? Well, that one we're basically, um, this illustration has less moving parts than a variable loan. It still illustrates a pretty impressive amount here, 5344. So while illustrations can only present hypothetical, you can see that life insurance does provide a viable option for the clients helping to supply, you know, who want to supplement that retirement income. We've also got that death benefit you can see here. Hasn't gone anywhere, it's still there. So you've got the options available in year six, net zero cost loans for those more conservative clients, if you will, or the variable loans. Um, the death benefit illustration, we talked about this a little bit. Um, you know, with the first two examples, the known variable, we knew the variable was 20,000, right? The unknown was the death benefit and loan amount. We didn't know those two. So those were easily determined by selecting that minimum death benefit, maximum withdrawal loan on the solve tab of our software. For a defined benefit illustration, let's say if we have that case, you know, we don't have a pre-populated solve to determine the missing variable. So in a defined benefit one, um, we have the premium and death benefit. So that type of illustration is a little bit more challenging to illustrate, but in a few steps you can do it. So first you want to specify the loan amount. 
we've got that at the, this example at 60,000. So you'd put the 60,000 in the loans on the software, and then we also, again, use the variable loans of five and a half. And then secondly, we manually enter a higher death benefit. This one, we went 910,000. Now we solve for the premium for that specified death benefit. And then last, we manually will dial down that death benefit until the lowest possible premium is calculated, and that's gonna support that withdrawal that we wanted. So presenting your client with a defined benefit illustration, it's, it's worth the extra steps, but again, it does take a couple extra steps to do that, but I wanted to throw that in there. Another kind of neat thing we suggest using is Innsmark. And I don't know if a lot of you are familiar with that. We provide that free of charge. If you're a licensed agent with North American, you have that available on our software. It's basically a third party, you know, kind of a comparative analysis um, product. It's a supplemental software is what it is. And that may, we make it available to all you guys out there that's contracted. This one real quick, and I wanted to put one of these on there. Maybe some of you haven't seen these, but in this example, we're using the same client from the previous illustration. Um, we've got Alan, age 45, preferred non-tobacco, paying 20 grand a year for 20 years into the builder and utilizing a 5.5% variable interest rate loan at age 66. In this Innsmark example, we're showing the builder up against a tax-deductible retirement plan, TDRP, and that's got a 7% interest rate. So if we assume Alan withdraws money from that um, tax-deductible retirement plan, I'll call it a TDRP upon retirement, the after-tax values have X. Okay, You can see that. 72, 468, we're there, that's fine, we, we see that. The first thing to make mention is the death benefit though. You know, we don't wanna discount the death benefit protection the client receives. In year one, if the client were to pass away, his heirs would receive over a million dollars from the life insurance policy, while that TDRP would provide an after-tax benefit of only 21,392. So that's less that the premiums were paid in the plan. So looking at a 20, looking at year 20, the death benefit for the tax deductible retirement plan, that maxes out at 877,294. That still isn't even close to the builder's death benefit of a million. So another main talking point um, before we switch slides is the premium um, going into that plan versus the builder. Considering the TDRP is a taxable plan, the client will need to pay 28,571 um, before taxes in order to be equivalent to the 20 grand paid in the builder. So again, the client would have to pay almost $30,000 into that TDRP to be equivalent to the 20 grand going into the builder. So very, very powerful. If you've never seen this, um, that is available. You can call our help desk. We can help you. Mark's group can help you run some ins, Mark. Um, but we'd be more than willing to do that any day for you guys and kind of get you familiar with that. So here's the next page. Um, this shows that in in year 44, the TDRP runs out of funds while the builder IUL, that illustrates loans all the way to age 100. So while still providing that death benefit. So even though the client paid the same amount or, or same amount of the after tax money of 400 grand into both the plans, the builder is able to illustrate the same after tax stream to the client for significantly longer while retaining that death benefit protection. So that's why I kind of reiterated at the beginning of this presentation is death benefit, death benefit, death benefit. That's huge on these as well. When you put something like this in front of the client, it's, uh, it's eye-opening. Um, again, we're nearing the end here too, so I appreciate everybody's patience. Uh, looks like we have um, almost everybody that started still on the presentation. So um, I wanted to just let you know, the positioning and present, you know, presenting of these, we're here to help you at North American supporting documents, sales tools, those are all available on our website or whatever link you use. This is one of, this is just an example of the one we use today, retirement planning marketing guide, client brochures back here, there's tip sheets, there's strategies, and there's also a client worksheet where you go over their amount. Things about three, four pages, and once you're done going through that with a client, you've got a pretty good idea, guys, of number one, what product to use, and also number two, you've got some numbers figured out that that worksheet will help do. And that's just one of many out there, those needs analysis I talked about. So if you're using one you're comfortable with, great. So in summary, we looked at, you know, why life insurance? Um, and I'll, I'll just kind of read the slide here. You know, we plan for the present, future, and beyond. We talked about those in depth. Um, why North American? We feel we have tailored products to meet your needs. We talked about the IULs today. Also look at us for term life insurance. We just reproduced that a couple, repriced it about two months ago. And also our no lapse UL, our number one selling product, the custom guarantee. And then the positioning and presenting on this one, the retirement planning sales kit. Uh, look at what the client gets. Remember, they get that death benefit, working years, uh, potential cash on the back end, and they get to create a legacy. You as an agent, a retirement planning solution, and then the supporting materials to help you grow your business. So with that said, that 
ends my presentation, and I'm going to kick it back over to Mark here. Thanks, Troy. Yeah, we do have a few questions that popped in here. Um, yeah. Now let's see here. Okay, so one of the questions is if I sell term, let's see if I can, all right. If I sell a term writer on IUL to give the client more room to get a future IUL increase, does North American pay the agent a full commission on the conversion of that term writer? Uh, well, we don't technically have a term writer, so there, there is not a term writer on our products. They would have to just manually um, increase that death benefit at a time of issue or a, a time of illustration, I should say. So if you're max funding a product like this, it's a good question. So on our software, you'll see death benefit, let's say 250000 and the client. Let's say we do that. We want to, on this Allen one, we did the 20000 going in and for 20 years, and we minimum death benefit. And if I remember right, we were about a million, right? Well, if you think Alan says, you know what, I'm going to be selling, I think he was a chef, right? I'm going to be selling one of my restaurants in the next couple of years, possibly. I might have 30, 40 grand, whatever the amount is. Mm -hmm. You know what? You might want to dial that death benefit up to maybe one five, one six, whatever the amount will be. Maybe illustrate another 40,000 coming in year three and see what that does to the death benefit on the illustration. See what the new corridor amount is. That might be the amount you want to um, bump it up to. So long story short, there's not a term rider, if you will. Um, you just kind of manually got to do that, and that's really where we ask questions with the client. Okay. I put a quick poll out there, too, while I'm asking some of these questions. So if you want to get appointed with North American, please go ahead and select yes, and I'll go ahead and get that taken care of here after the webinar. Uh, question is, is the SPIA an index annuity, or is it just a fixed annuity? Can you? It's a fixed annuity. Yep, it's not indexed. Okay. Single premium meat annuity, and uh, with North American, the period certain, um, our minimum period certain is a five-year period certain. So um, if you have somebody, you know, let's say we had that 100,000, guys, that's a great question, and the 100,000 caused it to MAC, but maybe 50,000 for two years didn't, we wouldn't be able to take the SPIA, unfortunately, so you, you could do like a two-year SPIA with company XYZ, so our minimum SPIAs are five-year, just to save some calls to the annuity department, I just wanted to let you know that, but Really, price that out on the software. Do a two-pay, do a three-pay, do a five-pay, do a seven-pay. A lot of those five-pays are going to produce better numbers than a two- or a three-pay. So just kind of play with the software on that. But, yep, fixed annuity. Okay. Then someone came back with that question on uh, before about the term rider. Would a separate term policy be better for commissions if they just wrote the term and then converted it? Um, would it be better for commissions? Possibly. It possibly could. That's a good point. And somebody knows our business or knows our products because he talked, he or she said conversion. That's the number one talking feature about our term products is, yeah, you can convert them to any of our product lines. So that definitely could be an option as well. Now, with that said is with the, with the term, if you convert it in the first five years, you'll get the accelerated death benefits automatically included on that product without any evidence of insurability. But if you have a 30-year term and we've got that sales that that gentleman or um, lady mentioned and we convert that term in year 15, hopefully something didn't happen to that client in those 15 years because if, if it did, we have to go through a little underwriting to get those accelerated death benefits after the fifth year. Now, Mark and group, it's not full underwriting. That's not blood. There's urine. There's just a health questionnaire. But if something comes up, so that might be the, if we're looking at that term alternative, just something to keep in mind on the back end should the client's health change. Younger client, yeah, that could be a good option. Yeah, let's see, got another question here. Can the SPIA be an index annuity? Yes, sure. Sir. Yep. Yep. Yes, yeah, sir. you could fund it now. from whatever whatever vehicle you want, yeah. Okay, let's see. Does the client who, who sold a builder IUL ever get, literature that says the company has a rapid builder product available? Oh, that's a little question or that I could have sold them a rapid builder. I believe the client might think a rapid builder is a better product. Well, no. North American, that, that, that's where the agent would come into play on that annual review and say, hey, the client's life changed the last five years. Maybe we have a better suited product for them. But no, North, we don't, we don't send out propaganda like that, if you will, maybe advising the client that Another one of our products might fit their needs at this current time, if that's what the question is. Yeah. Not 100% sure on it, but. That's kind of long. Um, but, yeah, I, I think the thing, too, is that what we'll do a lot of times is when you're calling in for a quote, we'll run the, um, the builder and um, we'll run two or three products at the same time just so you can see what they look like. So we yeah. can. Yeah. 
Yeah. And sometimes yep. it's real close, but you know, usually there's a big, of, a big enough of a difference there to where it's pretty obviously one product is better than the other. Yeah, and if that question is geared towards, you know, God, what product do I use? First and foremost, if you look at our three main products, the builder, the rapid build, and the guarantee builder, the name kind of says it. Mm -hmm. Builder meant the build, more long-term guarantee builder is like mm -hmm. the builder people, folks, except it has the guarantee death benefit. So it's going to build a little less cash. And then the rapid builder is your product that doesn't have a premium load. It's meant for that early cash value. It goes hand in hand with the concept Mark and I have done in the past called the smart money concept. Now, the rapid builder typically will outperform the builder till about year seven or eight. So if you have a client, this isn't exact science, but typically what I've seen, if you have a client looking at funding a product for longer than seven or eight years, um, you might want to do a little extra work and maybe run a builder for them. Yep. Uh, let's see. How does the claim of a chronic or critical illness payout, how does that affect the retirement funds and future payout within the IUL? Good question, good question. Um, we could talk 20 minutes on that from an actuarial standpoint, what it does. Um, how does it pay out? Typically, it pays out lump sum. We like to pay those out lump sum. Um, can we make monthly payments if it's a large amount? I've heard from claims we can. That's more of a claims question. I don't want to speak for them, um, but I've heard we can make exceptions. But typically, it's a lump sum payment. How does it affect the policy? Well, it's going to lower, you know, the death benefit. The client accelerates 240,000 today from a million dollar policy. Tomorrow they die, you know, the client or the beneficiary gets less than that 240. And then also when they do accelerate, they will actually get an, um, an a statement from our policy change and our claims department showing, you know, we want to confirm that you're taking this. This is what it's going to do to the policy. So um, it, it's not a bad thing, though, if you accelerate, if you're thinking, geez, if I accelerate, it's going to lapse. Mm -hmm. No. Remember, we have to keep a residual for most of those. 95% of the death benefit, or once they accelerate a million, then it shuts off. They can't accelerate anymore. But client policy is still enforced. And on most situations, lapse checking is stopped as well. Okay. Ed, Ed had a question as well about that. So I, hopefully, Ed, that answered your question. Uh, let's see. When are the terms on the wash? What are the terms on the wash loans? When, how much, etc. Um, right now it's four and four. So credit four, loan four. Um, that's available again year six. Um, that can actually be if you want to look at the illustration. That's really where that comes into play. Um, I will tell you this: the variable has gotten a lot more. Um, if, unless the client's really ultra conservative, we'll even go like a standard or the washing at zero cost. Um, but typically the variable loan, I would say 95% of the business we quote here from my desk is the variable interest rate loan. Now, like I said in the presentation, it might not be that high with other companies that maybe don't have a cap on their loan rate or that have a higher cap. With us, we have that 6% cap and we're illustrating pretty much almost worst case scenario, anywhere from that 5.42 to 6%. So. It's a it's something like I started the presentation with feeling very comfortable doing it. But you you can run all the loans yeah on the software there and kind of see the rates and whatnot when it prints out. I have a question about what is the age limit? Eighty five. Right? Yep. I guess on the policy. Yep. So and let's Yeah, age limit on the policy itself. Yeah. On the builder it's seventy five. So we can issue the policy 15 days to 75 years old. Um, some of our other products, they'll go up to 85, like the guaranteed, our guaranteed products are 85, like the custom guarantee and the um, guarantee builder 85. Um, something to keep in mind too on this builder, the product we talked about is an age last product. So when you're comparing to another company, I always say get the date of birth because 50% of the time, we're going to be one age younger than your competition, our competition. So use the date of birth. Absolutely. And let's see, are there bullet points on the critical chronic and terminal illness? Yes, there is, and, and we can actually email okay. that out to you. So and let's see. Um, what is a way for a person uninsurable to transfer 401k to index annuity without a penalty? <laughs> um sure well you know it's it's tough I mean if you're gonna put it into a plan um, obviously that transfer once that money's paid out it will be taxable but the problem is is getting them insured and one way to do that would be 
um, if you're going to put it into, and Troy, I hope you don't mind me speaking to this, but, but one thing is if you look at maybe a... that annuity, I'll let you take it. <laughs> into an index annuity, so I'll sit back. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, but, you know, if we're going to transfer that 401k into an annuity of some kind, what we've done before is we'll transfer that even into a single premium immediate annuity and determine how many years you want that to pay out. Of course, that payout will be taxable as it's coming out of that qualified SPIA. And we could use that to fund a survivorship uh, with, that will allow one uninsurable. So that's a way to do that uh, if that's something that might work for you. And if you want, we can certainly talk offline on that, William, if you, if you prefer. But, uh, yeah, we've done those kinds of things before and be happy to visit with you offline. Uh, does the acceleration of death benefit affect any of the cash value accounts for retirement income? Good question. Um, they do. They, I mean, if the client surrenders it or um, dies, remember it affects the death benefit. So of course, yeah, it, the money coming out of the surrender value. One thing, so accelerated death benefits, yeah, it does affect the death benefit in cash. Mm -hmm. Now with those loans, one thing that's not understood is um, loans do not affect the account value. So being we're actually charging interest, we have to keep that in, if you will, like the shadow account or whatnot. So that's staying in the account value, but surrender value. So when you're illustrating loans, you'll see it coming out the loan amount. When they start taking loans, you'll see it come out of the surrender value, but it'll stay in the account value. So sometimes that can be kind of confusing if that question's come up. And another one, can an insured received accelerated death benefits for term, critical, or chronic while taking loans on the cash surrender value? There are stipulations which, let's see, I, I think the critical, that's a great question, which I don't, I don't want to say offhand. I can send you some information, Mark, on that, um, and then you can get it to the person answering the question, because I'm not 100% sure on the chronic on that. So they're asking, they are taking loans, and then they have that happen. So loans are active. Is that the question? Loans are active and then take yeah. acceleration. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is a kind of a tough question. I guess I don't know how detailed you want to be on this, but it says in a competitive situation using the builder IUL versus a whole life, uh, can you discuss the guarantees, et cetera? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and we, we have some, I have a lot of, uh, non-compliant talking points against foot pitching IULs against a whole life. Whole life basically to me is more of a conservative standpoint. Usually you're not going to build up as much cash. Now there's some situations depending on um, how we're funding it where a whole life might look a little bit better. My whole thing, I mean, I could probably talk 20 minutes on why I think IUL or even UL is better than whole life. I'm not going to, but one thing I would look at is the valuability of IULs or ULs, mainly IULs, is um, the flexibility of getting your money. The flexibility of loans, withdrawals out of an IUL compared to a whole life. I think that right there is the biggest point. Um, and then also if you look at flexibility um, as far as premium and whatnot, death benefit, I think overall the flexibility of the IULs is much more prominent than a whole life. But there's a lot of other talking features on those as well. And you know what, I, there's something I probably wouldn't share from my desk, but honestly, if you're looking at some comparative analysis stuff, you could always Google IUL versus whole life. There's a lot of great non-biased articles out there as well. But they both have their place. Um, I think if you're looking at retirement in this concept we talked about, um, I, I put the builder up against most products out there in the industry, can, 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 even including a lot of whole lives out there from top, the top companies. And the question is, what is a general recommendation for taking loans in the early years of the contract? Well, as far as recommend, it, I, it, what they mean by early years, if it's years one, two, three, four, five, six, and et cetera, I don't know how early they're talking, but I don't know what they mean by recommendations. Yeah. Um, if they're taking loans, we'd recommend, there's really only one loan you can take prior to the sixth year. That's a standard loan. Mm -hmm. After that, you've got available the standard. You've got variable. You've got the wash loan, the net zero cost loan. Um, I really can't recommend what's best. I kind of probably based on every client situation yeah. individually. Yeah, you know? I agree. That's a tough question. Yeah. Plus, when you're in the surrender period, you don't have a whole lot of cash in the policy anyhow, unless you're really putting yeah. it on in there. Right. Okay. You know, something where it looks like the question box is empty. Great. So. Okay. Well, Troy, I want to thank you so much for taking time to do this. It's always very helpful and good, good questions. And it looks like we had a very good response here on our poll. So a lot of you are interested in getting contracted. We certainly appreciate that. I will get you out what you need here to get appointed. 
And um, so, again, thanks, Troy. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it as always. Pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you, folks, for taking time out of your day today. Keep in mind, I will be emailing this recording out to you here. Should be by uh, before the end of the day here today. If you have any questions, any cases, we would certainly appreciate the opportunity to help you with those. And we wish you all a great week and look forward to seeing you at an upcoming webinar.